The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We are looking forward to this SharePoint webinar. I'm sure you are too. We've had a lot of interest in this webinar. So we're going to go ahead and get going. Just a quick reminder, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into that question box. I will call them out and get them answered for you. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things over to Ben. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today we're just going to touch a little bit on SharePoint and some of the collaboration pieces, and it's going to be a live demo, and then at the end we'll just talk a little bit about some of the licensing and the cost of some of the technologies you've seen and how you might want to evaluate moving to the platform if it's of interest to you. So to start, um, just for those that are new, we're going to touch a little bit about ABC Computers. So we've been in business for a little over 30 years now. We've grown over the last few years, and we're up to 52 team members. And from a physical office location, we have four locations with our headquarters in Wapaka, Wisconsin, uh, an office in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, which is where I'm from, and then also offices in Alaska and South Bend, Indiana. And we have staff. Uh, located in various locations throughout the Midwest, um, both that are on this map and some that are off. Um, we really specialize on Microsoft Dynamics and the infrastructure that surrounds it. And it's just a few, for example, a few customers that we have that you guys might recognize. And then my, just to introduce the speakers today, so Jeff Pergowski is one of our account managers. Some of you may know him. or um, He's been with ABC Computers now six years. He's got a wide breadth of knowledge with uh, 14 different Microsoft technology certifications, everything from desktop to server level to the application side of things. So he's got a great breadth of knowledge to kind of talk to that end. And myself, for those that don't know, this is Ben Bolte. I'm a technology architect at ABC. I've been with ABC a little over 11 years now and have 22 years experience in the technology consulting background. I originally came from the customer side of things with being a systems admin internally and have grown to the consulting world since. So what we want to touch base on today is just kind of do a quick walkthrough of some of the collaboration solutions in Office 365. I'm sure you've seen the ads on TV and different pieces on social media and stuff. And there's a lot of questions we hear from our customers like, what is Office 365? And, and there's a lot of misconceptions of what it is and what it isn't. And we're going to do a walkthrough demo here today that Jeff's going to do. it. We're going to be looking at what's considered the Enterprise Plan 3 for those that have looked at the plans. But it's kind of, for lack of a better way of putting it, the one of the Cadillac plans of Office 365 that comes with almost all of the functions and features that you can get. And we're going to kind of walk through those different pieces of the puzzle, explain what they can do and in some cases what they can't do well. And um, at the end we will kind of walk through if, if those things of it are of interest, you know, what plans might work for you and what considerations there are because when you start the process of buying Office 365, you'll see that there's a lot of different plans. And although Microsoft's done a lot of work recently to try to reduce the number of SKUs available, it's still pretty confusing if you aren't in this on a daily basis to understand what's the best model for your company. So we'll go through that. So with that, let's, uh, Abby, if you could hand it over to Jeff, that would be great. All right. Uh, thank you, Ben. I will uh, attempt here to uh, share my screen. All right, and I'm going to be bold and not do the clean monitor. Um, okay, so uh, as Ben said, we're going to do a brief walkthrough. Um, you know, essentially what this webinar was... Um, we had to put a name on it. And SharePoint, I guess, is what we thought was the uh, um, the right thing to talk about because essentially SharePoint is the underlying uh, architecture that supports all of these different collaboration tools. There are uh, 
our many tools. And while I say that, I will drag over here um, my Office 365 portal screen. Um, this is, um, I, I guess, and I should also preface this um, webinar by saying that for those of you that are in um, uh, that are interested in SharePoint um, on-premises, that um, is, is not really what we're talking about, mostly because um, we, we've found that in order to do SharePoint correctly, it is a, uh, um, an intensive application in terms of the hardware, um, security settings, knowledge, um, expertise. So, so the fact that Microsoft has a, a pre-provisioned um, SharePoint solution is, is what we're demoing today. Um, we have people on staff here at ABC that are experts um, in SharePoint. I don't think I would be included in that group, but uh, from a high level, uh, I've got a clear understanding of what Microsoft's story is about it. Um, and so, so what we're showing today is, is kind of the Microsoft base SharePoint. As, as Ben said, there's a, a skew around the licensing that gives me the rights to do this, but but kind of where we're starting off is, is just a Office 365 overview and, and collaboration. And again, um, to kind of tie it into our um, Dynamics NAV practice, how Microsoft's story about how you leverage your investment in Dynamics NAV, how you get more from it um, on the Office 365 platform is, is kind of where we're going. So um, with that being said, I will jump in here. Um, I'm, if you, you see my screen here, um, you might wonder why Office 365 is calling me Garth. Um, ben chose that name for me for our demo. Um, so I'm going to be Garth for the rest of the day. The, the bonus um, of being Garth is that if you hate this demo, you should complain about Garth um, to everyone at ABC, and, and he'll get in trouble rather than me. So, um, so this is the Office 365 portal. Um, as we look around here, um, you can see there are some similarities with other um, some of the competition out there. Um, for those of you using Google Docs, these uh, these square in the corner here looks very um, similar to Google's offering. Um, this is where you can uh, click through to to see all these. Um, Right here, I'm using a trial version um, for this demo environment. There's the option to, um, to purchase um, different licensing. I've got uh, this link here to install now, and simply clicking that will give me uh, the rights to install the full-blown desktop applications um, that we are looking at here. I'm going to try to stay off of those with maybe the exception of Excel because um, really this collaboration story works uh, is told best when uh, documents live online rather than on your local machine. So um, here are the different parts of, uh, of Office 365 and what we're going to be talking about today. Um, each of these icons um, relates to a specific part. There are uh, some of these like uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote that are actually um, the web application versions of, of these different offerings. So we're not going to spend too much time there, but these will be the tools that are opening stuff up. So, so basically, this is uh, you know you, you sign into Office 365, and this is what you're looking at. Um, and again, SharePoint is the uh, the architecture that's running all of this. So, so we'll start by uh, by maybe, and I'll just for uniform purposes go up to this corner as often as possible. I'm going to click on Mail. Um, and where you know this Outlook web app isn't new to anyone that is um, that has been using Outlook for a while or using Exchange, um, especially Exchange Online, uh, there are some some subtle differences here. So so um, all of the uh, this is the Outlook web app. It is configurable, um, you know, just like Outlook is on your. Um, uh, on your desktop, you can set rules. You can um, change the view settings, and you know it's a it's a uh, it, it looks different than than Outlook 2010 does. It's got the you know kind of the monochromatic feel to it that Microsoft has identified as what uh, people want in terms of visually appealing, um, not overburdening. We can uh, click through these mails and you know and essentially what we've got is you can see that uh, that I've I'm Garth. Um, my presence is indicated here. I've got a green dot that means I'm available. Um, I have now gone uh, to standby. I can change my presence here um, as needed. The uh, um, 
and when I'm replying to emails, this is uh, you know kind of where you start to see what. Um, some, some of the differences in terms of collaboration and being on Office 365. Now I can reply to an email and, and do anything I need. When I, go, when I choose to insert, um, typically this uh, um, clicking on an attachment, I would be looking at my computer um, to pull up an Excel spreadsheet maybe that I saved to my desktop. Um, here when we're on the Office 365 version, by default, we're looking at uh, um, OneDrive and and OneDrive files, which we will get to in a minute. Um, so it, it first of all prompts me to recent OneDrive files. Um, I've got my files, which um, are actually files associated with my Outlook um, account. Um, these files can be located uh, um, in OneDrive. They don't necessarily have to be, but if I they're files that I e that I use a lot in email, they're going to start to populate here. Um, I can also share files um, via email that have been shared with me. Um, again, that's going to be permission dependent because these are not just aimless files that are floating around or sitting on my desktop. Um, these are files that exist somewhere in Office 365, so they've got permissions associated with them already. So if I send this um, file to the wrong person, um, they're not going to be able to open it because it is. Um, they're going to be looking at this file in Office 365, even if they're not using Office 365. So um, groups are here. Uh, I can obviously still go to my computer if that's what I deem necessary. But you know, these uh, the fact that uh, um, files are now associated with my Outlook profile um, starts to indicate what level of, uh, of, of collaboration that we're getting to. So, um, so I, will, uh, I will discard this. Um, I'm going to, you know, I, I guess um, other, other differences. So, so um, now I'm looking at a different email from a colleague of mine, um, Garrett Vargas. I can see what's uh, what's going on with Garrett by uh, by clicking um, on his name here. I've got information about um, if I want to choose to not just reply to him to send a new email, um, add a calendar event, or send an instant message to him. I've got all these methods of interaction with him um, from one click on his uh, on his name. It also brings me to. Uh, um, to his profile, which um, if you see here, if you can see that hyperlink um, is is existing on SharePoint. So he's got a personal site on SharePoint uh, that I will click into. And we'll just give it a second to build here. You'll notice that uh, we've got this demo environment prov provisioned. We are, uh, it is not, um, been optimized for performance, um, but uh, so at times there will be some some brief delays. Um, so so I this is his Office 365 site now. By default, um, it's going to show me that uh, that first of all he's offline, um, and I've got uh, documents that he and I have uh, that either he shared with me or I've shared with him. Um, but documents that we have in common. That's just uh, base SharePoint that's coming up here. Um, but again, it's it's nice if I'm looking for um, you know if I'm looking for something from him. The collaboration story is uh, from Microsoft is about um, putting the information that people need in front of them um, and and making it easy to find. So so as we start to uh, click through all these links and these different apps within Office 365, it sometimes can get confusing and overwhelming. Um, not any different than clicking through um, a network file share um, on your on-premises infrastructure, and you have to remember, was that in the prospects um, proposals folder? Where did I last see that? You can, you know, open use Word to look at recent documents if it's a Word document that you're searching for. But essentially, when it's on-premises, you face some of these same problems. When it's um, on Office 365, when these files exist on Office 365, you start to have some extra tools and some more visual cues available to you. So, um, you know, just again on his personal site, a uh, brief note about him. Um, managers that uh, that we share. Um, 
I can have the ability to follow him. There's a brief org chart here that I can um, drill into if necessary. I understand that some of these uh, might be maybe overkill for depending on the size of your organization, but certainly uh, we at ABC, as we are a growing company, um, org charts change frequently. It's it's nice to have uh, to have that available and available at a click. You know, not having to drill into a, a specific file in the org chart, but but have that associated with people's uh, contact cards. So so that uh, you know again that's coming from the Outlook Mail app. Um, I guess the other thing to, to note about that, if you are an Office 365 uh, um, user now or you're considering it, that there are, um, you know, when you start to look at this, this looks the same um, whether you're on your iPad and you're looking at the Outlook um, iPad app, if you're on your Android phone. Um, there's the what Microsoft refers to as fidelity, the way things look um, through different panes of glass and on different devices. So, so this webmail app looks um, very similar to um, to the Outlook uh, desktop application, and it looks very similar to the iPad and Android apps. So, regardless of what device you're on, you're going to get some familiarity. Um, so I guess now I will uh, I'll go to the calendar. Um, again, the, the, the calendar is uh, very similar. You can change views. Um, anything that you can do in, uh, in the desktop application that you're used to, um, opening these uh, calendar events, um, digging into them, editing them, etc. That's all uh, um, pretty standard. So there isn't too much new here. Um, again, all these uh, the indications of presence um, for people that are in the meetings, the ability to you know, one-click schedule, that's all um, still supported in this uh, in this calendar app as well. Um, the people app, um, which would be your contact card, um, again, something that isn't uh, um, isn't substantially different um, in the web client on Office 365, um, but is a uh, it's it's different. Um, well, I guess it, it really isn't too different. And then we start to get into as uh, as I'm moving to the right here. I'm going to jump into Yammer um, as we nudge towards that that SharePoint sites list. But uh, when it comes to Yammer um, and and when Microsoft bought Yammer, um, a lot of people were unsure of what their plans were, and, and kind of how it fit into the story. Yammer is um, essentially enterprise social media. It is um, meant to be. It's meant to bring the benefits of social media into your organization, into your business. So, um, some people have referred to it as um, Facebook for business. I, I don't think that's fair because I think a lot of people have negative connotations associated with Facebook and about the annoying <laughs> reminders you get about games and friend requests, etc. Um, this is meant to, Yammer is meant to be a way to show what people are working on, um, a visually um, appealing way to show what people are working on and, and what matters, what's going on within your organization. Um, and, and so you see here, this is my Yammer feed looks suspiciously like a Facebook news feed. Um, I see that a co-worker, uh, Alex, is uh, um, working on this uh, um, strategy document here. Um, I'm Garth. I've been uh, tagged on this. Um, I liked this post here, so uh, so I, I you know supported my. This is this is to show other people in our organization what is going on and and what we're currently working on. There are ways that uh, um, I can draw attention to uh, the fact that we're working on this. Um, putting tags like marketing, um, using the hashtag marketing, means that anyone else that within my organization that wants to see what's going on with marketing can go in here, type in marketing, and and see what what's working, um, what the marketing team is working on. They don't necessarily have to even be in marketing, but the point of of Yammer is. Um, it's designed to kind of create this hyper-connected network. So all these different documents that people are working on, um, 
everyone knows about those documents and 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 not to the point of if you're working on personnel issues that certainly doesn't have uh, any place in this Yammer discussion but the the documents that do um, need collaboration that do um, show others in your organization what's important and what we're you know what kind of stuff we're working on right now those are the things that uh, that show up in Yammer feeds and people decide what you know what goes on to Yammer it's it's a um, and I'll show you in the other web applications how how this plays into it but uh, you know here we've got uh, sales opportunities um, we're talking about a, a new product right here it's got tagged and and this is something that you know I've posted a question um, to other members of the organization is this uh, piece of equipment going to be available for a demo um, there's a tag there so I can you know if people are searching they can they don't have to ask the same question simply by typing uh, in that tag if that's the piece of equipment that's frequently asked about um, and, and then you see just like Facebook there are groups so you know maybe you're a member of the IT support team maybe you're a member of the marketing team or sales you you know start to create your own groups and, and see what's necessary um, for you know what kind of documents you're looking at and as you start to click through these documents not only does um, does it benefit the other members of your organization that are seeing your activity through Yammer um, if you choose to share with them but you also have um, it starts to build a profile and, and it starts to recognize what sort of documents um, you're typically interested in um, and so then it goes and takes the uh, Yammer can take the next step of suggesting to you content within your organization that maybe you're not aware of um, because other people aren't sharing it on Yammer but that it starts to see that uh, and suggest. So um, there's a recent activity tab here. You can add um, apps that you want um, your entire organization to be made available to. The the nice part of the Office 365 um, popularity is that there are a lot of third party um, vendors who have started to write apps for for the different um, web apps that exist within Office 365, so add-ins, if you will, that help further the functionality, um, ties into social media platforms other than Yammer. Um, there's all kinds of, uh, of, of apps in the um, Office 365 marketplace that you can, uh, a lot of them are free, that, that you can leverage to, to again get more from your investment. So you can choose if there's apps that you think would be really beneficial to people in your organization because maybe it's an industry specific um, app. You can post those here. There's, um, you can post any company resources into um, you know, as and again, it's it's network admins. You choose, um, and if there's time, we'll get to kind of that that link um, in Office 365 because I do have admin rights in this. But uh, there, you do have the ability to get to uh, um, to configure and control all of this. So it's not, uh, you know, it, it. I guess at first glance, it kind of looks overwhelming, and you start to think about all the documents you work on, and boy, do I want those documents shared? Do they want people knowing what I do? It, what you know, Microsoft has found is that indeed when people start to connect and share the information, um, share the, the work that they're doing with their coworkers, productivity increases. Um, you know, I think there's some uh, some numbers here um, from a business trends customer survey that uh, Yammer users feel that they gain 76% more visibility into other departments or locations and 80% feel more informed with what's happening inside their organization. Um, you know, as a member of the account management team, I need to be sensitive to what the delivery guys are working on, what hurdles they're running into. Um, so, so an application like Yammer helps um, that feeling of connectedness and, and that's really, uh, that, that survey kind of speaks to it. Um, the other advantage is that uh, it's a, a platform for two-way dialogue that everyone can see. Um, so, you know, it's designed to kind of improve internal communications and, and maybe get employees to uh, engage with each other a little bit more. So, so um, I will uh, leave that up here. I'm going to go back to, uh, um, to the Office 365 apps. And, uh, and, and next um, on the list here is 
OneDrive. And um, OneDrive has been around, it's been renamed um, a number of, of times over the, uh, um, from SkyDrive most recently. That was available in both a uh, um, consumer version and a business version. This is OneDrive for Business that we are looking at. Um, OneDrive for Business, um, these files exist on a SharePoint backbone, so there is um, added search functionality, um, added sharing and permissions um, that you get because it exists in SharePoint. Um, but again, this uh, this can be a uh, um, this OneDrive for Business can be installed as a desktop application, um, so that it will. And let me just see here if I can bring this up. This is a, a view of my local PC. Um, as you can see, um, because I'm always investigating, I've got all kinds of, I've got, this is my personal OneDrive. This is my OneDrive for business. Um, I've got different folders here. Um, my personal one has all kinds of pictures that I share. But uh, so I've got an installed application. This just exists in my favorites. It is, looks no different than my documents library or my pictures library. Um, this is a web view of, uh, of Garth F's um, OneDrive for Business. And as you can see, there's some files here. Um, just at a glance right away, he, I can see um, what's being shared if, uh, if I want to share something. Um, that's easy, but I'm just going to drive into uh, um, this folder here to look at the community service. Um, let's open this Excel file. So this is an Excel file that uh, I have uploaded here. Um, I'm not sharing it with anyone. I'm going to click on it, and it's in its opening uh, by default. You saw that was Excel Online. So this is the Excel Online web app. Um, pretty basic workbook here, but uh, but from from this application here, I can choose um, if I want to share it. Um, that's available here from one click. Um, if I want to make this part of a Yammer conversation, I don't, um, it's prompting me to log in again, but uh, but Yammer is one click away right here, and that's that starts to uh, um, become a pattern as you see these uh, these different platforms coming together. Um, if I do choose to edit the workbook, and I, let's say I want to edit it in Excel online, brings up uh, um, you know brings up a standard web format and and uh, our Excel web app format. When I start to uh, you know start to look at that, I'm just going to grab here my uh, I've, I'm signed into. Uh, our, our NAV 2015 demo environment. You start to look at the uh, at the similarities um, just in the in the ribbon um, of these apps, and you start to see what Microsoft is talking about uh, in terms of fidelity. Um, a lot of you know this this ic these icons as you go across the ribbon are the same icons that exist in NAV. Um, the uh, colors um, are the same. I've got uh, you know just this is my basic role. Center. I'm signed in as a sales order processor, but but your users, um, as they become familiar with whether it's they become familiar with the Office product first, um, and then start to become familiar with the new Nav interface, or they're living in um, NAV, and they start you know they need to get used to Office 365. Microsoft is making all of this stuff um, look and feel the same, and that you know really adds to the uh, um, to the comfort level and and you know makes people f get more out of the software ultimately because uh, because it's it feels like uh, stuff that they're used to already so um, I can do uh, I can do whatever uh, whatever I need to in this um, I can open it in the full blown uh, desktop application of Excel I can share I can discuss on Yammer. Um, let me just get my mouse back in here. So, so OneDrive files, um, as you start to save, um, again, it's this um, can replace network shares. It can, uh, you know, replace your My Documents folder. I guess everything that everyone uses every day isn't necessarily meant to be sh stored on SharePoint. Um, Depending on what type of files and, and storage there are, storage costs associated with uh, with SharePoint. Um, 
really, I guess those costs are, are kind of trivial in relation to uh, you get a lot of storage included in most of the basic bundles. But um, but that is a uh, let me just get this back here. Um, but that is something to consider, and and if you're thinking about um, you know certain directories within your um, network share are great um, you know examples of why uh, you would I mean are great examples of things that should be stored here. I'm going to uh, let me just see. I'm going to get back to OneDrive. Just drag this over. All right, so so this is uh, we are back to looking at uh, um, at OneDrive. I'm going to go on to the next one. Um, now, next one one is sites um, tasks here again, uh, similar to tasks in Outlook. I'm just going to click into there briefly. Um, I don't even believe I've got. Uh, see, look, that's good. I have nothing to do. Um, that's a good feeling. Of course, that's not real, but uh, um, another part of. Uh, of the Office 365 SharePoint platform is um, the video, um, the video portion, and you know where people might say or ask, why does Microsoft have a video platform in Office 365? You know, essentially there are websites like YouTube that do a very good job of sharing video. This allows you. I mean, this is a Office 365 is a complete solution. If you want to embed, um, you want to control the content, control um, who sees what. Um, there certainly you have the ability to to share and and to control some of that stuff through sites like YouTube. But to be able to do everything in uh, you know in one platform is kind of where Microsoft comes from. They realize that videos can be um, an important tool in terms of training in the uh, organization. So, so they've given a. I've uploaded here a nav video just to to kind of show. Um, it, it's a robust, you know, solution. It uh, um, I can tag it as I want to. Now that it's tagged in here, um, I put it in a in a marketing folder. Um, but and I will just kill that right there. But um, it, it's you know it is um, it's. It's a platform that is optimized for video streaming, and that's you know included in your Office 365 uh, SKU. So you've got the ability, you've got a place to store important content that's optimized for video streaming um, that you can then link to through any of these other tools. So so video where it's not uh, um, again maybe not the the thing that uh, gets you to to really consider this because it's not terribly important in your organization. Maybe it is, um, and Microsoft is is you know enabling this platform uh, for everyone. So so I think um, next we will we'll jump into um, SharePoint sites, and this is you know actually where um, I, I think the the bread and butter of this uh, collaboration comes to life. The the uh, so this is this is a SharePoint, and this is really now. A, it, basic SharePoint for any of you um, on the call that are SharePoint developers. Um, you may laugh at how basic this is. Um, SharePoint is just a, a monster of a tool, unlimited potential and how you can leverage it. Um, and because of that, it's kind of hard to, to jump into a spot and say this is uh, what we think. Um, this, is, this is just a standard uh, out-of-the-box SharePoint environment. Um, you can see there are sites here, um, suggested sites to follow, sites that I'm already following. Um, and we'll just uh, we'll hop in to to just show you um, what some of these things look like. So um, we're going to go on the community portal um, again. SharePoint is a collaboration platform, a storage platform, um, a, an interactive application platform. If if you get to that point with it, um, but here is uh, you know here's a portal that is got some communities within our organization so you know there's recreational IT um, community service so so these are different areas that uh, that we might start to collaborate um, we might start to store documents on these different sites and um, you know as we let's just jump into the IT one um, because that's something near and dear to my heart um, you can see like uh, you know this there's 13 members that are involved in this uh, SharePoint site there's 10 discussions 32 replies um, so 
you know, you can you can start to uh, see how popular these different ones are. As a, as the site loads, um, these are discussions. Um, you know, there are uh, let's just see uh, tablet PCs to be issued next month. I want a tablet. Um, so, you know, it, Darina here has posted that uh, um, this note. I want to reply. Um, I just start uh, typing right here. Please include me on this list. Thanks. Now um, I post my reply. I get added to this um, thread. So there I am, Garth. Um, I can uh, see who else is on this list. Um, Let me go back to sites real quick. So, so that will, as we uh, get down the road here a minute, some of this activity will start to show up. But um, the community is one. Uh, I think where it uh, where it really starts to to um, to to take um, hold and to really, I guess, uh, paint a vision of what we see as the future of collaboration in terms of. Uh, Dynamics NAV. We've got some uh, some some different Visio demos here, and and essentially what these are is a. Uh, let me click on the production one. So so here's a production dashboard. This is actually a Visio um, that is created. I've got the ability to open this in in Visio. Um, like Visio, these parts are related to each other. There are uh, you know I've got some. This is a uh, this is a. A motor production uh, organization here, and this is um, this dashboard is showing how these different units, uh, the sub assemblies, are, are performing. Um, but but this uh, we've got some throughput Excel parts over here. The the real story, I guess, in these dashboards is that when you have an instance of Dynamics NAB, you've got uh, your SQL Server, you start to get the ability to create. Um, to create forms and reports that instead of being um, the way they were in the past, um, getting uh, you know stagnant reports, having to generate, having to click a button or run a script to to you know at day's end pull data and and get it to the appropriate people, you can start to create dashboards and um, and live Excel reports that are constantly looking at your nav data um, rather than so so clicking a report that you've got saved um, on SharePoint you set the data source and you have the ability to just open that report every time you open that report it's a live view into the data there you can certainly refresh it if you've you know had it open for a while and you think that someone posted a big order and you want to see how that changes production um, or changes sales numbers. You can certainly there are options to uh, to refresh, but it's these sorts of, of dashboards that can be created when you have your um, when you have uh, the SharePoint platform available to you. Um, so we will. Uh, so so this is one um, this is one dashboard. I will uh, let me just get back. All right, so um, I can go to uh, a different SharePoint site. So that's something that's production related. You can see where you know maybe you are going to um, enable this. Um, you know, you're gonna you want to start to set up data connections between your nav data and. Um, so let's go to this finance site here. Um, This should bring up a uh, an expense report. And again, I said just be patient. So, so again, um, this is if you see this is an Excel. Um, this is an Excel web part. So, um, someone at my organization has created this. Um, this is a a live look. Um, I can choose how I interact with this data. I can, you know, I can put this on my favorites. I can pin this anywhere within my Office 365 experience um, so that it's constantly available to me. And again, this is a live, um, this is a live report. I can set this up so that it's pulling data from NAV. And so every time I look at this, um, you know, maybe it wouldn't be Q3 and Q4, but uh, um, 
but you know maybe I, I set this up a little bit differently. But this is you know essentially um, clicking the snapshot tab. This is the data that's uh, that's behind this report. Um, so if something doesn't make sense to me, I can you know I can look in uh, there. I can drill into any of these numbers. Um, I can you know perf interact with it as it is an Excel sheet and and you know. I would say I would guess that most of us are familiar enough with Excel that that's a tool that we feel comfortable using, and and because this exists on SharePoint, um, this is where uh, you know the, this is where I think the uh, the real value is in, in the collaboration platform. It's it's these sorts of reports that you can create and and use Dynamics NAV data as as the data source. That uh, that then give you the ability to uh, um, share these. Um, you you know we've I guess found that organizations that embrace this um, and have embraced this early, you start to get the the people that are the report writers within your organization. Um, a lot of times, um, you know there are gurus in Excel. Imagine if you create these um, the those people create these reports once. Um, Pin them on a uh, um, on a site in SharePoint, and then you know send out the links, um, configure permissions so that the appropriate people can see um, what they need to see, and they've done it once. Um, they they don't have to schedule, they don't have to worry about um, it bogging down the system because um, this is on SharePoint. Um, your nav is is hopefully uh, optimized to the point where this isn't bogging down the system. You can all the same controls that you have using Excel on-premise you can use um, on SharePoint but you also get the benefit of being able to uh, to make it available um, to make it a, a dashboard um, live look-in view rather than uh, than something that is a stagnant document that needs to be constantly refreshed um, you can see here I can uh, as I said if I've been in this document for a long time and, and had this open all day or someone said hey I posted an order check out what what this changes I can choose to refresh um, uh, the calculations as necessary, but but essentially every time this report is opened, or this spreadsheet is opened, it's a live look into live data. So, um, I will uh, let me see here. If I want to go to uh, one of these other uh, one of these other forms, um, I can you know I can edit. Uh, this is the finance announcements. This is one file on the finance SharePoint site. Um, there are you know budgets etc. But I don't need to uh, to get into that. Uh, um, and so so essentially from SharePoint then um, where our documents now. Um, especially Excel documents can be linked to our nav data um, or other you know the, the ability to link data there is um, it, almost infinitely number of, of sources that can be uh, you know that, that can interact with Excel so uh, you can have even an Excel sheet on your uh, on your an Excel file on your own computer that you can start to uh, to push up to the cloud and, and set as a source um, but but the next step, I guess, from from just SharePoint sites and being able to look at your data um, in a way that that is dynamic and live all the time is uh, is going to Power BI and and Microsoft's Power BI um, story is um, you know takes it to the next level. So when you start to look at um, when you start to look at reports and let me just go back to a site first of all. Um, when you start to look at reports that reference um, your data as it relates to maybe demographic data, um, you know there are tons of uh, of, of databases that are out. Um, databases uh, based on retail, based on um, healthcare. There are free databases, databases that you, that maybe you're, you're paying to have access to. Um, through Power BI, you get the ability to start to connect and slice and dice these uh, um, this data in a, a visually appealing way so um, so we're going to uh, open this this chart that uh, is a, a store um, sales analysis um, we're looking at uh, you know again there's some different tabs here there's a screenshot um, profit by country now and I'm clicking through a little quickly here, so I will be 
patient as this loads. Um, again, um, these these reports, these um, Excel files are live views into, now we don't have this um, pulling from our NAV database right now, but, um, but uh, you know, I can show you how easy that is. Um, essentially, you know, this Excel sheet has been uh, um, integrated with some geographical data um, that certainly, you know, the tables in your NAB database would support. Um, it, is, it is really easy and, and maybe at some point, I think, um, in, later on this year, we're going to get to um, a, a presentation just on Power BI and start to show how easy it is to create some of these uh, um, some of these reports and relational uh, databases. Here um, we've got you know an overlay just based on on the data that has um, geographic based on you know stores in relation to countries. Um, we can scroll this map. We can drill into these. Um, I will grab another one here. Let's see if this one is uh, a little bit better. Um, again, everywhere I'm clicking, I've got the ability on this Excel spreadsheet to add this to Yammer, um, to tell people that it's something that I'm working on. Um, people that have sh these documents uh, that are subscribed to these documents will see that uh, um, if changes were made within these documents, um, again, just a different, uh, this is a, a profit analysis, looks like based on uh, category and year. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, we've got visually appealing. Um, there's a tab here that breaks it down by city. Um, I'm getting a privacy warning that says uh, to be displayed on the map. Some of your data needs to be geocoded by sending it to Bing. Um, because this exists on uh, um, Office 365 and SharePoint, um, we've got that ability. I click the enable button, and it starts to allow Bing to uh, um, to pull out the geographical data, encode it into a map, and make this. Uh, so, so as you start to uh, to see, you know, maybe uh, um, maybe this is a, a view of, of your state, of the different markets um, or sub markets within your state. Um, maybe it's national, and you start to look at. Uh, okay, this is where we are selling. Um, you know, this is where our our, our products are being used. Um, you start to compare that to databases that maybe show demographic numbers. Let's say, you know, your product is used by um, 25 to 40-year-old um, families who own their own home. Um, you can start to put, um, you, can, you can find that data source of that, um, of that database, set that as a source um, for your Power BI query, and then integrate your data with, you know, how are we doing in these markets? Um, it, it, and and you do that once, and it's uh, you know, and it's it's uh, as the data source gets updated by maybe it's a vendor that you bought that uh, from, maybe there's uh, it's someone in the Power BI marketplace that you bought some of these from, uh, um, or it's one of the free um, databases by the U.S. government. You, you start to see the value of your investment and in how you start to take the data out of your nav in a safe and secure way and overlay it with with other data sources so um, it, it's uh, as I said there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot that you can do here um, in, in terms of uh, setting the ability to uh, um, let's give it a minute um, get get to the uh, point where you're telling it, you know, and this I don't have anything, uh, anything set up. Basically, um, clicking on data sources here, um, it is just this, uh, this easy to uh, to enter in um, to set your data sources. Um, I'm pointing it to the NAB SQL Server. I'm pointing it to uh, a different um, SQL instance or, or a different database instance. Um, you start to configure these, probably done by your system admin, but um, I mean it's it's that easy to do. So, um, and I know sometimes uh, Ben doesn't like me to use the word easy too much, but but really compared to um, what it used to take to put, I mean, this this isn't new functionality. Enterprise um, huge organizations have had the, the ability to do this for years. Um, 
Microsoft has brought this down to the uh, the SMB space, um, the small and medium sized business, where now you know for subscriptions that cost a handful of dollars a month, you have the ability to to let your data interact with with uh, with all these powerful tools. And so uh, so that's kind of I guess um, I'll click on delve here um, just because it's it's a pretty uh, cool thing that that kind of does a good job of tying up. But if you uh, if if you think about all the places we're talking about these files living, um, they could be in your OneDrive for business, they could be on a SharePoint site, you start to become overwhelmed with what am I looking at lately and what have I been working on. Um, Delve is a, is a Microsoft's answer to uh, to you know how that uh, how to get back and, and to show in a way that is easy and, and straightforward what you've been working on lately. Um, this is stuff within my organization, but if I click on uh, um, if I click on myself here, I see that uh, um, things that I have worked on recently. So all Delve is showing me is a view of my uh, most current. This was the um, the video that I um, uploaded. I can see that it's on the you know it's got a tag here a video. Um, if I've yammered about it, um, who I'm sharing this, who can see this. Um, so, so Delve is is the final piece of the puzzle that just acts as a uh, a way to put. Um, to, to show, I guess, to help you keep track internally of what uh, what you've been working on, where those documents reside. It doesn't matter um, whether these documents exist on SharePoint. I don't have to remember what site they were on. Um, if I have been working with them, I've been working with them on Office 365. They show up in my Dell feed, and I'm able to, uh, you know, if all else fails, I can go to Dell and just pull these up. This all works because SharePoint is uh, is running in the background and these files are existing. Um, if it's OneDrive for Business, that's running on a SharePoint background um, backbone, um, certainly on SharePoint sites, but all of this, you know, and so um, is there a Delve application for the desktop that can show you that um, in the same view? It's it's just not the same. I mean, to, to have this level of of uh, everything being connected, um, everything being in front of you in a way that's um, easy to to understand and yet not overwhelm is is really kind of the story that. And everyone uses these tools differently. Microsoft has put the platform out there that uh, you know if you're going to be on Dynamics NAV, um, if you're going to have your email hosted in uh, Microsoft Exchange. Uh, why not take the next step and put your files in there and get all the benefits of, of the full Microsoft collaboration story. So this is, uh, I think, kind of been the end of, of where I see as the walkthrough. Um, if you want to you know, talk a little bit about, um, I guess we've just got a couple of minutes left, but if you want to talk about what you see uh, in terms of SKUs and just you know, maybe make sense of that for the people, I think that's uh, the next step. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Abby, if you can flip that back to me, the presentation, please. So I believe it's showing now. Um, yep, I see it. All right, so you know the the next the question we get from customers all the time is how do we pick a plan for Office three sixty five? And to me, it really breaks down to there's a handful of questions you got to ask yourself. You know, how many users do you have, and how many are you going to need to have as your company grows? Um, from an Office 365 perspective, there's a break at between, there's two levels of plan. There's a standard business, and then there's an enterprise plan. And the standard or the small business version goes up to 300 users. If you go over that, you have to be in an enterprise plan. So that automatically sways you one direction or the other. <coughs> Um, if you need it, or if you have a remote desktop server, it's going to swing you towards the enterprise product SKUs because that's the only way you can get the remote desktop rights for the office applications. Um, whether or not you need Microsoft Access, um, it's a great product, but for what we see at our client base is very few people actually use it, and if you don't need it, it's one of those areas that allows you to stay into the small business plans. Um, whether or not you really need the desktop applications at all. So we have this conversation a lot of times with clients and they say, you know, 
not all my users need Word or Excel or they don't need the fancy version, they don't use that type of functionality and you know they'll kind of like the, you know a notepad or word pattern that some of those type of tools are almost enough for. And if that's the case, you know the the online applications, whether it's Word or Excel or PowerPoint, they're pretty they're pretty good tools. They don't have all the features, but they continue to to add features in the roadmap. And for the average person, they're probably enough. Um, then looking at from an application perspective, whether you need SharePoint or you need Exchange or if you need Link, which is getting rebranded as Skype for Business, if you've heard or not. But whether you need those type of applications or those pieces of the puzzle, all will help you determine which SKU that you fall into. And like I was saying before, it breaks down into basically there's two types of plans. There's the standard business plan and the enterprise plan. And both of them have a, they have a similar step process in. The base essential package gets you most of the basic functionality. Then there's the middle SKU, which basically is just the application. So if, if you don't want hosted exchange or SharePoint or those type of features, but you're, let's say you're running Office 2010 or older, if you want to just upgrade to the the client application, so to speak, that is an option now, which wasn't earlier available. And then whether it's the, the business premium plan or the enterprise E3 plan, that combines all of the online tools of SharePoint, Skype, uh, OneDrive, all of those functions and features. And then just looking at this a little bit more from a dollar perspective, and you know, we talked about the business plans. So this is for the SMB market, so you're under 300 users. The prices vary anywhere as low as $5 a month per user to up to about $12.5 a month per user, depending if you need all the applications, the online features, um, SharePoint, your internet site or intranet site, I should say, the Yammer stuff that Jeff was showing earlier. All those features are available, but there's a few features that kind of throw you into that enterprise SKU, and if you're looking for some of that compliance type stuff, if you're required to have um, archiving and some of that advanced functionality for email and stuff, that might swing you into the enterprise plans. And with the enterprise plans, you get all of those added features, but you also get all the, the other features that you were seeing in the small business plans. And these plans vary anywhere from as low as $8 a month per user all the way up to around $20 a month per user. And from a scaling, from a user perspective, you could have as many or as few as one, and on the high side it's unlimited, but it would get you the office applications, the mobile versions. Um, one thing that Jeff did speak to is all the stuff that you've seen in this demo today is also all available from a mobile device, whether it's an iPhone, Android, or Windows style device. Um, the file sharing feature with OneDrive and those other features you've seen today, they're all available. And you know, the one thing I think that everybody has to keep in mind is whether you looked at Office 365 a year ago or even a month ago, it's a constant evolving roadmap. And one of the neat features about being an online technology is you don't have to worry about installing the updates and those type of things, and that stuff is rolling out constantly. And if you're interested or if you're on an Office 365 plan already and wondering what's new, um, just do a, a Bing search for Office 365 roadmap, and a site will come up just like this. You can click on the plan that you want to look at, or if you just want to see general features and updates, uh, they're constantly rolling stuff out. And if you just look at, I grabbed this this morning, there's been recently 20 updates launched. They're rolling out 21. And in development, there's 43 uh, updates that are currently in development and testing. And they also tell you if something's been canceled, because sometimes as they go along, you know, features go away or whatever, but it, it will tell you all that stuff. Um, it's a really great thing to see at whether you're on an on-premise environment. You always have to wonder, like, when, when is our IT department going to install the next update? 
Well, in Office 365, that's, that's a constant evolution. And as a user, you have the, or I should say as the admin of the company, you have the option whether you want to be an early adopter or late. And as updates roll out, that will automatically take place for you. And then from a next steps perspective, if, you, if you've seen the stuff, or if you like the stuff you've seen today in Jeff's demo, you know, call your IT partner, whether it's ABC or somebody else. We encourage you to, you know, to do an assessment of your needs with them and see what you need and what you'd like to be able to do that you currently can't or can't do as well as you'd like. And then migrate your data and then really start embracing the new technology. It's a constant evolution and um, there may be features and functions you wish you had today that show up on that roadmap and you might have them next month already or you know I follow the Microsoft blogs and those type of things for Office and 365 and the features and functionality that are getting added and that are on the roadmap are just really exciting if you're a techie like myself. So with that, um, that's the end of our presentation today. If there's any questions, Abby, we could answer those quickly. But um, otherwise, I just want to let everyone know we appreciate your, you joining today and look forward to joining a future webinar for us. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, I guess we've gone a minute or two over. Abby, hopefully we don't have too many questions. I actually don't have any questions yet. If anybody has any questions, feel free to type them into the question box. We can stay online here if we have any questions to be answered. We don't want to rush anyone. But, of course, if anyone needs to rush off, our webinar will be recorded and available on our website, which is abc-computers.com later on this afternoon. And guys, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending today. And if you got questions in the future, you know how to reach out to us. We're always here to help you. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Abby. Thanks. Bye bye.